Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday Leading Change this week with Karsten Lutzen. Hi, Karsten. Welcome back. Hello, and thank you again. Absolutely. So here on Wednesdays, we like to dive into change uh, processes that we are involved with. Of course, as Scrum Masters, we're involved with change processes all the time. And we want you to focus on one where you got a lot of insights from, a lot of, lear- a lot of learnings from, and especially walk us through the story of that changing uh, change process, of course, but then highlight the tips, the tip, the tools, the tricks, the techniques you learned back then that you still apply today. This might be a bit uh, controversial, but one of the biggest change learnings, um, or whatever we call it, I've had and and insights was actually about estimation. Um, in in the team I was part of, we estimated first off uh, in a, a quote story points quote end, which were then translated into a, I can't remember one story point one ha- one mandate something like that, right? But it, it's not really that important, and then. Uh, our dear product owner used that to calculate velocity and and then we at one point realized that was maybe not the way to go. Then we in the team started to discuss how could we do it instead and then we have read something about story point should actually be a measure of complexity. Okay, then let us uh, mes- then let us measure in complexity instead. And then we started having discussions and we had one on the team that was quite uh, quite verbal about his opinions and we had some on the team that was not that verbal and a bit more likely to just uh, say, okay, fine, we'll do it. But we tried out with the uh, complexity and it ended up having uh, yeah, estimations in, in all over the place because what we then learned after some time was that we could have some task that was super trivial, update the same thing on 10 servers, right? Complexity, really low. We know exactly what to do, but it would still take a lot of time. So we could not use, or the product owner could not use these story points for estimation or anything. So then we actually had to go back again and think, okay, so how can we then define if if we are estimating these uh, story points? Then we ended up trying to define them as effort. So being a mixture of time, complexity, and uncertainty. And then also going to our product owner and say, these estimations, they're not for you to use. We do them to align inside the team to make sure that we are actually aligned on what needs to happen and where are the uncertainties so we can have a discussion about that. So we won't guarantee any th- any any key uh, that you can just uh, multiply by pi, and then you will have the hours spent. And that has formed my way of using estimations. If teams really obsess or really want to do estimations, I always tell them: if you want, only do it as a conversation starter to align on um, these three factors. That was at least the factors we identified as being the most uh, important. So. Uncertainty. So is there any big uncertainties that we need to address? Then let us address those. Time. It might be that it's super trivial, but we just know this will take time because we need to get a hold of five other teams and two project managers, and I don't know what, right? And the last one. Yeah, risk. Yeah, exactly. And just having these three all mixed together, that has actually been quite a, quite valuable for us. And then one of the things we did afterwards, or I've done afterwards also when I've helped new teams that were doing story points estimation is trying to show them some, if you had somebody that was like one story point equals one mandate was to use a control chart, for instance, and then just show them. So if we have five story points, how big of a a deviation is there actually for five story points and two story points and help them see that that is probably not the measure. You can easily just use issue count. So we started, in this team, after we had gotten actually to a point where we know knew each other quite well, just to use issue count. So last sprint, we finished, uh, I don't know, 15 items from the backlog. Let's try to pull around 15 items in again. And that was an equally good metric for us, at least. And then if we had, because we were quite open, if we had some discussions, we could actually just ask. So I don't know what to do about this one. I assure you have thought about this one because historically uh, we have seen issues in this and that. And that... That was a super, super learning journey, but it also, it was not something that we did within a month. It took us half a year, a year to, to get from where we started with mandates until we, uh, until we used the uh, issue count. And the fun thing is that 
after, when I then talk to other Scrum Masters, they've been on somewhat a similar journey. And I, I just, uh, I, I love that everybody, or not everybody, but a lot starts out by, by doing these, uh, these small uh, shenanigans until they all also get to a point where it's just like, yeah, we don't need it. We can use it to start discussions, but besides from that, no. So one of the things that comes uh, to mind from this story, uh, of course, everybody knows I'm a big advocate of no estimates, but so leaving that aside, I think that one of the key things that comes from this story in my mind is this learning journey, right? Do you actually use the journey word? And yep. it, it seems to me that as Scrum Masters, when we deliberately focus on what the journey is and, and understand that it's a process, right? You can't go like this to no estimates, right? There's there's some steps in, in the book. I talk about seven different steps we go through in order to get to no estimates. But I think that it's very important for us as Scrum Masters to accept that change is a journey that, you know, it might take steps we are not even aware of right now. But as long as the team is on board and taking those steps, even if, you know, right now you have all of that experience. So you could say, hey, let's just jump these two steps. But for the team, those steps might be critical before they can go on to reach that end of the journey. So for me, when it comes to change management, I think that you, you highlighted that very, very clearly with your story is that we need to accept and also take advantage of the fact that we are on a journey and that we can, as Scrum Masters, help the team decide what is the next step and then help them to go through that next step. What what do you think about that? I, I completely agree. I have fallen into the trap of being a Scrum Mom uh, several times, right? So just, okay, I, I have been through this uh, journey previously. I know we can just, if we just use issue count, everything will be good. We don't need to do all the preliminary things, right? And in reality, I took all buy-in away from the team doing that. So even though it can be difficult, right? And I'm not saying that you should aim for the teams to fail, right? But at some point, they also need to get those learnings. And one of the my favorite quotes on that is leave your ego at the door, right? So my my experiences were in another context, in another project, in another time. I can I can relay them i can share them but in the end it's up to the team if 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 they can use it for anything and then if they really want to do estimations then i will try to to help them get the most value out of it and then maybe down the road we can start to build up some data showing that issue count would probably for instance have worked as well or gut feeling yeah absolutely i i really like that uh I've been a scrum mom before, like we've all been, like all scrum masters have gone through that, uh, especially the most experienced ones, because it takes experience to get through that and and actually make those mistakes. Uh, And uh, I think that it's beautiful what you said, that if we do that, if we try to push the team forward before they're ready, actually, we are taking the buy-in away. Yes. Right. We're removing the buy-in and therefore we're making change harder, more difficult for us and for the team. And especially if you're then asked to then help another team because all of a sudden you cannot be as close a scrum mom as you were before. And then that's that's the sad part, right? Because then you will start to see things falling apart. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I would say that that's a sure sign you've been a scrum mom yes. if when you leave, everything falls apart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Karsten, that was a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Again, I, I I believe in sharing both successes, but also the in the, the hardships, right? Because that is also a part of it. Absolutely. Leading change is one of the core skills we must acquire, but it is only one of the steps towards our success as Scrum Masters. Tomorrow, on Success Thursday, we will talk about how to define success for the Scrum Master role. We'll cover tips on how to measure your way to that position, and most importantly, how to develop that focus on continuous improvement that is as important for Scrum Masters as it is for teams. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.